So in order to create a VPC peering connection, obviously you need two VPCs, isn't it? So we have a my VPC demo that we have already created before and we have the default VPC. So here, if we want to test the VPC peering connection, we need instances, isn't it? So that we can see whether we are able to actually connect to them or not. So let's suppose I will make my VPC demo to be the requester VPC and the default VPC will be my acceptor VPC. Okay. So here what happens is I'll go to the EC2 instances that we have. So I have created two instances. So to test if the connectivity is proper between both of them and we are making sure that we are not able to connect to the instances that are in the different VPCs, we need to connect to them, isn't it? So let's connect to each of the instances and see whether we are able to connect to each of them by using the instance that we have. So I'll connect to the first instance that is a public instance that I have for my request of VPC. I'll just copy the public IP4 address and I'll just connect to that. Yes, I am able to connect to this one. So that is 10.0.32.1.1.2. So if you see here, this is the private address. So now similarly, what I can do is I can go to the my acceptor uh, public IP4 address that I have for the instance and I'll just copy this. And I'll just create one more instance of this one and I'll just repeat the same process again. So we are able to connect to this one as well. If you see the private IP that I have here is 172.31.32.186. So let's keep them side by side. So this one is the my default VPC. So this one is from the request of VPC, my demo VPC, and this one is the my default VPC. So I can just use the same IP address and I, I can try to connect to this one. So if I want to connect to this instance, I need the SH key, isn't it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the EC2-PEM key here, key.pem. And I'm going to copy the key that I have and I'm going to paste it here. Anyways, it will not work, but mostly what happens is we have to change the permission for the keys. So c2 hyphen key.pem. So I'll just change it and I'll try to connect to the instance once again. So this will not connect. So that is the basic problem that we had because this is a request of VPC and this instance is in another VPC and we are not able to talk to each other, isn't it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a connection between them and we will be using VPC peering connections. So let's go back to the VPC console and here you can see VPC peering connections or the peering connections. So you just need to click on peering connection. And I had already created a, a peering connection before, so don't worry about it. I can just click on create peering connection. And here you have to provide the name, my peering to. So whatever name you want, you can give it. And here you have to select the local VPC to peer with. So this is your requester VPC. So what is our requester VPC? It is my VPC demo. I'll select this. So now it has been associated. So this is the side of block. And the next one that you have to select is so if you have a specific requirement like it is in another account, you can choose another account here or if suppose the VPC is in another region, you can also make sure you select this one and choose one of them. So now what happens is you have selected the options here. You have to just choose the VPC that you want to have as an acceptor. So our acceptor is default VPC. So I'll select this. So now this is a side block for the acceptor VPC. And here as I've already given the name tag, I cannot give the name tag here so you can give any other tag that you want but now for now this is enough for me i have given the name tag i have given the requester vpc i have given the acceptor vpc connection as well so that's it you can just click on create peering connection and now it is successfully created so click on ok so once you have created or initiated the request to create a peering connection it basically goes to the pending acceptance stage. So remember the life cycle that we had studied before in the theoretical part. So why is it still in the pending acceptance state? Because we need to accept it, isn't it? So right click on this one and accept the request. So here you have the details of the requester account ID, the acceptor account ID, and uh, you can just click on yes, accept. And now what it is telling is your VPC peering connection has been established to send and receive traffic across this VPC peering connection, you must add a route 
to the peered VPC in one or more of your VPC route tables. So I have to modify the route tables, I know that, and I can just click on close. So now it has become active. So our condition that we had that it should be accepted has been accepted and it is now active. Here as I'm owner of both the VPCs, I'm able to do this, but let's suppose you are working on a bigger organization and you have a VPC that is not a part of your same account. You have to request the one who is actually owning this VPC to make the acceptance criteria perfect and uh, to accept the request that you have. So he will do it for you or he or she will do it for you. So now as we have to add the routes, so before this I can go back to my same instance again and I can just check if I am able to connect to the instance. Still no. So not a problem. We haven't added the routes yet. So this is basically the main route table. But as we are using the public internet, so I have already created the my IGW route table that has the route for the internet gateway. So I can just edit this route table and add a route for the CIDR block that I have for the instances that are there in the default VPC. So what you can do is you can just uh, add the CIDR block. So I don't remember the CIDR block. So I have to go back and check for the CIDR block again. So this is the default VPC. So click on the VPC ID. Here is the CIDR block. Copy this CIDR block and come back here and paste it as the destination. So what you're telling is whatever traffic is going to this destination should go from the peering connection obviously isn't it so this is the peering connection 2 that i have created recently i'll just click on this and i'll select it and i'll save the route so this is the one-way traffic that i have created now from my vpc demo to the default vpc the same way we have to do it from our default vpc to my vpc demo because this is one to one connection isn't it so this is the route table that i have for the default vpc so here what i can do i can just uh, click on this one and I can edit the route here and I can add the route for my my VPC demo so that CIDR block is 10.0.0.0 slash 16 and here as well any connection that goes to this destination has to go to the peering connection so I'll choose this and I'll choose the peering connection that I've created recently and I'll save the route and I'll just close it so as per the theoretical aspect that we have here this should work so similarly, if I go back here and I just try to do SSH, yes, it works. So for the fun part, I would just go back to this instance that I have. So this is the one that is in the default VPC. So I'll go to the home, sorry, I'll connect to this once again, to so CD home. PC2. Okay, so I'll do ls, not a problem. So I'll create a BIM file that I have. So I'll just create a hello.txt and I'll type hi my VPC demo and I'll just save it. And I'll go back to this one and I'll do a ls. I see the hello.txt here isn't it because I have I'm connected to that instance and now I'm able to access the resources that I need so that is how helpful the VPC pairing connection is yes I'm able to access the record or I'm able to access the file so this actually sums up the peering connection part